Sheen Shop. Yeah, boy. What's going on guys, thank you for checking out this Outward video. If you haven't guessed it yet, we are talking about my new favorite build. This Disc of Death playstyle makes use of enchantments, skill cooldown reduction, totems, and much, much more. You get to absolutely trash enemies with a chakra and axe that deal some serious damage. Let's check out how to put it all together. Step 1 is going to be taking the Soroborian's faction quest. This is the storyline over in Harmattan, and will result in the following rewards once completed. Logistics Expert, which offers plus 10% cooldown reduction, plus 5% movement speed, plus 5 pouch capacity. Sar Chakram, which has the highest physical damage of any Chakram currently in the game. We will also need to grab the Frozen Chakram and the Sunfall Axe. The Frozen Chakram is sold from the Soroborian Caravaner for 2000 silver. Very expensive purchase, but it is ridiculously good. The Sunfall Axe can be acquired from the Stone Titan Caves in the Abrasar Desert. Just read all the runestones there and it will appear at the very bottom of the cave. As far as armor goes, we will be wearing a full set of antique plate armor. This is crafted with the blacksmith in Harmattan as long as you can provide him with some silver and three shield golem scraps. These scraps are dropped from the larger golems that use magic. One can be found in the clock tower area directly in front of Harmattan as you leave the town. This armor set can be enchanted with an amazing enchantment called Economy. This can be put on the full set to give negative 35% mana cost as well as negative 30% stamina cost. I chose the Dusk backpack simply because it has 5 barrier and I absolutely love barrier. However, we will drop this in most fights, so use whichever one you like the most. The Dusk Backpack in particular can be bought from the Giant Merchant in Caldera pretty early on in the game. He has a 50% chance of selling it. As far as skill trees go, we will be grabbing the Warrior Monk, Philosopher, and Primal Ritualist. Both the first two can be found in Monsoon, and the Primal Ritualist can be found in Caldera. When taking a look at the Warrior Monk, you should grab every skill except Perfect Strike and Counter Strike. We want Master of Motion for more defense, and Flash Onslaught for backup damage. When taking a look at the Philosopher skill tree, we will be grabbing everything except Ice Sigil. The Fire Affinity is much better for us and gives us even more defense against fire. When taking a look at the Primal Ritualist skill tree, we will be grabbing every skill except Reverberation. That skill will not be as useful with this build and Nurturing Echo lets us regen mana, health, and stamina quickly without using potions. We will also want to head over to our Matin and buy the tier 1 skills in the Hex skill tree. The Jinx and Torment skill in particular will be very useful for us. As a friendly reminder, each tree has tier 1 skills that you absolutely need, so don't forget to grab them in order to round out this build completely. I also recommend you take at least 3 points of mana so that you will have enough to use Chakrams. You could grab 4 or 5 and still be fine, but the more you take, the less health you have. Just be aware of this. The skills you want in your hotbar are Brace, Jinx, Torment, 
all three chakram skills and the two totem placement skills. You could switch out the totem placement skills, but I like having them readily available so I can pop them down when needed. Now there is a lot to this build, so first I'm going to go over what all we have and how it works with each other. The Frozen Chakram inflicts elemental vulnerability, meaning we do more damage to enemies inflicted with this. Since we have hexes, those do a ton of damage. Next up, we have the Sar Chakram, which can be switched out to do more impact and physical damage. This lets you decide which is better for different enemies, since some have weaknesses to elemental damage, while others are more weak to physical damage. The Sunfall Axe inflicts burning and does fire damage. This is crucial for harder enemies because we have fire affinity and our armor has a fire damage bonus. All in all, we get a 50% fire damage bonus to our fire attacks. This is a pretty large amount, but it gets even better. The Lightning or Sky Chimes Totem inflicts Holy Blaze on enemies afflicted with the Burning status effect. This effect causes enemies to take 6 lightning damage per second, taking a significant amount of health away from them without you attacking. So you get a lot of damage with the synergy we are creating. Next, we have our Hexes. You can inflict a Hex of each element, meaning you get more damage from that fire bonus here as well. Not only that, but the Antique Plate Armor offers a 20% damage bonus to Ethereal damage, which is one of the more common Hexes. The Totems themselves also inflict a Hex on enemies who are within their range. This allows you to activate the Hexes without applying any yourself. The Hexes can do a lot of damage if activated, and then you can use the Chakram to finish everything off. Here is a list of the total stats we actually have once inside Totems, and with all boons active. This includes Elemental Boons as well as Discipline. This build gives us a lot of protection from our armor and totems, as well as tons of elemental resistance from multiple sources. You could take hits for quite some time before worrying. There are a few weaknesses that we should take note of though. The Antique Plate set, for example, has like uh, no durability at all. It has so much protection and is amazing for mana reduction, but it will need repaired after any significant fight. As long as you remember this, you will be fine but having damaged armor can completely ruin the bonuses we get, so try to check this before bosses. This armor also does not have elemental resistance, so certain elements like decay can quickly damage you. Popping boons will minimize this since we have such a high amount of barrier, but it still prevents you from being completely immune. Now that we know what we're dealing with, let's check out how to properly use this build. Step 1. Pop all boons, including elemental boons and discipline boon. Step 2. Place down both totems close to each other. Step 3. Place as many hexes on your enemy as you can before they notice you. Step 4. Hit the enemy with the frozen chakram using every chakram skill. This should inflict them with the elemental vulnerability. Step 5. Activate all hexes and watch your enemy's health drop drastically. Step 6. Switch to Sar Chakram and finish off the fight using the massive fire axe damage and heavy hitting Chakram skills. Most of the time, this will kill everything in the game except bosses, and even those guys will be damaged quite a bit. It is important that you stay inside the totem's range, so the enemy will continue to become inflicted with hexes as well as the other damaging effects they do. Also remember that Nurturing Echo can be used at the end of a fight to gain health and mana from your totems. Hit the totems as much as you need to, to gain more charges, and you might just get all your stuff back immediately. This build is crazy powerful, and is extremely good on harder enemies. The second chakram skill itself knocks down almost all enemies in one attack, letting you trash them from the get-go without putting yourself in danger. I used to be afraid of chakrams, because I had a hard time hurting enemies without getting hit. Well, no more. This build offers enough defense to give you confidence, and enough damage to back that confidence up with some results. Enjoy trashing all your enemies from afar or up close. Either way, they will die in the end. Mana potions are super easy to craft, and I would keep a hefty supply of them since this build is very mana heavy. But other than that, you get lots of stamina to work with and so many different ways to attack enemies that it is hard finding opponents that can even challenge you. Hopefully, this gave you some idea of how well certain builds can synergize with each other to create a god of destruction or even a disc of death. Thanks for watching the video, and I will catch you in the next one.